Hey guys, what's going on in Scandal here? Welcome Scandals back to the channel and as you know on patch day I usually do a little patch review plus I try to do a video where we talk about every build um, That could be valuable. What, what I'm gonna do on this particular patch is I'm gonna limit the amount of builds that I'm covering because people said the video was too long and they weren't watching them So I'm gonna try and put like 10 8 to 10 builds that are gonna be good on this patch I'm gonna rank them ever so slightly, but I will not be including every single build that I think is um, viable for the current patch. I'm just basically going to throw in builds that I think will be good based on the current update. Um, if you like the content uh, and you want to be part of the scoundrels, feel free to like and subscribe. Leaving me a comment is really nice. I try to read all of them. I try to reply to as many of them as I can. So if you'd like to leave a comment, there's been, I, honestly, you guys have been really lovely the last few days. You've really made me smile. You've actually left me a lot of really nice comments and I really appreciate that. Um, and thanks to G2A for sponsoring the channel. There's a reference link in the description below. And also, loads of you have actually been following me on Twitter and tweeting me and, and, and on Instagram and stuff. Uh, if you want to get hold of me outside of YouTube and talk to me, there are two places you can do it. Um, Discord and Twitter are the best places. I do sometimes respond to Instagram DMs, but if you tweet me or come onto my Discord with links in the descrip description below, I will uh, be able to chat to you and we can talk about TFT. And I'm going to be start doing some viewer games like Mort does on his uh, channel where we're going to be playing like Ultimate Bravery TFT, um, like just loads of really random stuff. I'm hoping like one day a week I'm going to get some viewer games up on the channel uh, and we can have a bit of fun through the Discord. So that's my plan. Let's talk about the patch then. If you've just got that minute and a half of a scoundrel housework out the way, let's talk about the patch. Okay, new galaxy, plunder planet. All champions have a chance to drop a coin on death, especially the first few essentially. Uh, Mort has said that this levels out across the game. Most people should get about the same amount of gold. Not sure how I feel about this. I feel like <sighs> my personal opinion is a fun galaxy, but those people that get strong early boards um, that are able to kill champions quickly uh, and, you know, are actually able to get kills on champions in the early game are going to be rewarded with gold. So you can spend gold to make gold. If you don't get, if you don't high roll the early game or you can't kill any champions, I feel like you're going to get massively punished and you're going to have to survive. But in the late game, you might get loads and loads of coins. Um, it's really difficult to tell. I'm going to have to play some of this galaxy before I know how I feel about it. But it just feels to me that it's going to reward high rollers in the early game because they're going to get both economy and and a strong board, which is going to make them take over the mid-game. Just my personal opinion. Nikoverse being removed, probably a good decision. Uh, Nikoverse, in my opinion, was quite a toxic universe. It was basically, if you saw my video yesterday, it's kind of one of those situations where whoever hits the, the first strong unit, like a 4-cost or a 5-cost, instantly double Nikos them and tries to take over from there. Uh, Galactic Armory, this change is amazing. All players now get three same components rather than two completed items. It's going to give you more flexibility. Um, and I think this is really, really good. Guy. It's, it's going to turn Galactic Armory into one of my least favorite galaxies into one of my favorite galaxies, which is going to be very interesting. Only one trait change on the current patch. Celestial gets nerfed at two. Celestial splash at two was pretty strong, used in quite a lot of compositions. So it makes sense that they're trying to tone it down a little bit. But... Um, I don't know, maybe th this this patch being light is a good thing. That's something that I think I mentioned on Twitter. I said, actually, I was a little bit disappointed to see that there weren't many changes, but maybe this is the direction that TFT needs to go. Like, less huge sweeping changes and more just little tweaks until it gets into a good spot. Graves getting buffed, good, because Graves was kind of garbage, plus Blasters uh, are not in a good spot right now. So Graves getting buffed might give Blasters a good viable early game. Um, and at two, getting the four-second blind back is really nice. Uh, Jarvan being massively nerfed, 25%. He's been basically having 33% of his effectiveness cut at ranks um, one and, and then essentially scaling up towards level three. He's going all the way down to 75%. So uh, Jarvan getting hit pretty hard. Uh, understandably though he's still going to be a good tank you know in protectors he's still going to be very tanky because uh J jarvan with warmogs they haven't changed how that's going to interact protectors are still the same jarvan with warmogs is still going to be a great early tank it's just not going to be as oppressive as uh, as it was that means shako is going to get a little weaker zaya comp is going to get a little weaker Jin's going to get a little weaker in general but i do think jarvan's still going to be fine um just not as oppressive as he was darius getting a 50 health buff 
lowering, lowering mana. So Space Jam, maybe back on the menu. Uh, difficult to tell because Space, Space Jam is uh, a bit of a slow roll build. But actually, you saw how much of an impact taking 10 mana off Shaco had taking 10 mana off Darius so they're the same uh the, the same mana value although Shaco does get the infiltrator buff so he does um get a slightly quicker attack speed but it's, this is a pretty big deal for Darius I would say um I genuinely feel like we could see some space jam coming back into the meta which is nice because we might be able to see Ma oh, I think I think mana reva is still kind of weird because you have to put in Irelia uh, and, and, and unless you find Thresh but yeah we might see some space jam Lucian five mana a drop level two and level one his damage is getting increased by actually a significant amount we could see cybernetic lucian carry which is going to be um something that i'm going to keep my eye on blue buff lucian um or you know shojin's lucian like they're going to basically be constantly ulting um the only problem with lucian is he's a little bit inconsistent he's not like Vayne, where he always tumbles away from his target lucian can sometimes run it down right into the middle of the enemy composition so that's one of the issues with lucian in that the fact that the fact that his relentless pursuit isn't quite so uh, reliable but um yeah big big buffs for lucian and actually with the graves buffs with the lucian buffs maybe a really really strong mid game for brawler blasters which could be with the jinx buffs that you're going to see later might be good enough rakan health nerf i think needed important but the knock up uh, duration is still the same so rakan's still going to be fine i think ash getting a nerf in terms of mana um honestly the first ultimate was never the problem personally uh obviously it's the fact that she just constantly spams with shojin afterwards so i still think you can play the shojin's ash build it just means you're gonna have to wait maybe one one and a half seconds longer before she gets her first ultimate off or you go double shojin's to make up for the lack of mana but we'll see uh this is the biggest buff on this entire update and i think if, if there is anything that is going to get hot fixed this update it's going to be master yi he gets a 20 armor buff and a 15 magic resist buff now despite the nerfs to his ultimate this makes him innately tanky like way more tanky than he was previously so he's going to survive longer especially when he's not ulting this means that blade bros and maybe 6bm shredder could be in a really good spot or even potentially looking towards a six rebel blade master composition or a rebel blade master composition where master Yi is the primary carry very interesting to see if master Yi is going to be thought of as a primary carry on this update um, i think that he's going to become very strong with these changes the only issue is as with all master Yi compositions is you really need him to get to three star to be the sort of the later game carry and it's finding a comp and at what level you can roll for master Yi three star will be the issue Nico getting a slight nerf um, to the fact that she can, she's not going to, her first ultimate will still happen at the same time, but the second will take a little bit longer to come through. Uh, and I think that's fine because she was very strong in both protectors and in, in, in Star Guardian Sorcerers, but this is a very minor adjustment and I still think Nico is going to be obviously that front line. You can't really replace Nico. She doesn't, she does what a lot of people don't do. So uh, it's just a small, a small power uh, tone down. Five attack damage on Vayne is pretty solid. I think she got hit with a nerf hammer a little, too, a little too hard. And with the Lucian buffs and the Vayne buffs, maybe we see Sabinette get a good mid game again and we can start to see some more cybers Jin getting a pretty hefty nerf like an almost minimal nerf at one but a pretty hefty nerf at two um 444 damage is still fine i think they, they said this literally because they just wanted to meme it with all the fours but you know this is obviously going to reduce um Jin's power level but not not so much so that he's not viable i still think he will be viable um the fact that shako hasn't been touched in my opinion um does mean that uh dark star is still going to be good because shako was one of the primary mid game carries and i actually think was the one of the reasons that you actually ended up getting to late game because shako was actually incredibly strong so i still think dark star is going to be fine because shako is still strong and yes okay Jarvan and Jin got nerfed but karma and shako haven't and i think it'll probably just be more balanced now still a viable composition this jinx nerf um honestly is in my opinion really like tiny but maybe that tiny nerf is all that she needed or to buff the, all that she needed with the rest of the nerfs to make her viable again i don't think she was not viable on the previous patch i just think that it required a very specific set of circumstances to make her work well so maybe we see jinx coming back into the meta soraka i i don't know i don't know did soraka need a nerf that that's just that's just my personal opinion i don't know if soraka did need a nerf or not uh in star guardian she definitely was felt a little bit oppressive from time to time but I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure ever I, I ever thought of Soraka as a problem child, but I, I guess the problem is that maybe when Blaster Brawler comes back in, Red Buffs coming back in, and then Soraka becomes pretty useless anyway. Victor Total Mana coming down is nice, but again, Victor's one of those units that it's it's like 
battle cast and he just doesn't work well with battle cast he just doesn't apply damage enough um and battle cast in general feels like a wasted trait on him and i think right now if you're playing sorcerers you're still playing star guardians um janna getting a nerf but not a huge nerf just means that that first ultimate is going to take a little while to come off but in star guardians you're probably not going to feel that a huge amount like one second or so uh and still with shojin she's going to be very strong i don't know if zerath needed a nerf honestly um, this is the big. This is the most confusing change this patch to me. People weren't really running Zerath in Dark Star compositions anyway, and outside of the Nikoverse, people didn't run Zerath much, regardless. I'm not sure Zerath needed the nerf. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know if Zerath needed the nerf personally, but hey. Um. So basically, knock, that's Nocturne bug fix. Uh, the biggest thing here is that um, the delay at the end of the round has returned, giving you time to pick things up, which is nice. It's going to extend games a little bit, but it does mean like in neutral rounds, you're going to have a bit of time to pick up the loot orbs and you're not going to lose economy. Happened to me all the time, so I'm really glad this comes back. Cool, that's patch notes. 10 minutes this time. Wow, I had a lot to say apparently on a very small patch. Uh, let's go through some comps that are going to work well on 10.15. All right, guys, let's dive into the builds for 10.15. The first of which I think is going to come back in a big way this update is Astro Sniper. Now, this is a variation of Astro Sniper that I've seen a couple of people playing, but there are a couple of variations that are existing on ladder right now, and I'm going to go through two of the major ones because we're just going to do some switchabouts. This is the two sniper variation. You're using Jin and Teemo as your primary carries. Blitzcrank wants to be there for the chrono buff, but also you want him to be able to pull someone on the front line. You don't want to have him on the back line because obviously the distance between the target and snipers makes a, a sort of a difference when it comes to uh, damage. So Astro Sniper, um, I think is going to be a very, very good build on this particular update. In terms of itemization for Wukong, he can have things like Redemption and Frozen Heart. The other variation of this build, which I'm going to show you very quickly, is you drop the Blitzcrank, you drop the Soraka, you move the Karma here, and then you're going to have Ash, who is obviously very strong, and Caitlyn. And then at level 9, what you'll do is you'll drop in Lulu, uh, probably not next to the Karma though, you'll drop in Lulu, and you'll have the Celestial bonus in. That's the 4 sniper variation. Um, so, a strong build. Um, I'm going to link, uh, I actually prefer this version, so I'm going to link this version in the description but just watch the video and you'll be able to see uh, actually do you know what i'll link both versions in the video um so that's the, the two astro sniper variations i think are going to be very strong on this update okay guys vanguard and mystic this build's never going to go away is it um it's one of those builds that uh, uh, when other builds get weaker uh, this build is generally going to get stronger. One of the issues with Vanguard Mystic is it sucked versus Darkstar because Shaco would just obliterate your back line um there are two variations of this. This is the classic variation. This is Vanguard for Mystic. Um, if you don't have Rapid Fire Cannon for your Cassiopeia, you're going to want to move her up a little bit. But this is Vanguard for Mystic. It's the classic variation. The alternative variation, which you can run, is Vanguard 2 Mystic, which I will show. Uh, sorry, so six Vanguard 2 Mystics, which I'll show you now. You keep the Karma and the Cassiopeia, and then you're going to add the remaining two Vanguards into the lineup. Um, this is purely to give you a ridiculously tanky front line. Um, I like to put the Leona on the back line just because she's kind of useless and she'll tank infiltrators for you. You can kind of surround your Cassiopeia if you want, or you can just stick everybody on the front line like this and just have the Cassiopeia at the back line. And that's the Vanguard 6 Mystic variant. Very like very good versus Last Whisper because 6 Vanguards gives you 1,000 armor. Last Whisper, I think, cuts through 60% of your armor. So you're still left with 400 armor on your front line if the Last Whisper cuts through um, sort of their, their initial set of armor. So it's a really good counter to Last Whisper because you just have that much more armor even though last whisper will do uh, a significant more damage than they would have done without it this is a build that can be a little bit weak to uh, magic damage though so versus sorcerers and star guardians it's not going to have the same kind of effect going to link both of these variants in the description below it's going to be a pretty good build in this update some minor nerf to soraka janna and nico but i don't think enough to uh take them out of the meta personally i think this is still going to be a super strong build um it obviously will be a little weaker but honestly they are such minor nerfs and syndra hasn't been touched and syndra was really the main driving force behind this build's success the soraka nerfs were going to slight hurt a little bit and i still would like to include the javan in there because combined with janna a lot of attack speed a lot of true damage coming from the star guardians which is actually quite a nice addition to this composition so even with the javan nerfs still think he's going to be viable he also is adding a lot of you utility to the Nico because she's going to get a shield when she, she sort of casts her ability so yeah I think um, Star Guardians 
You've seen me do a couple of videos on it before. Um, again, it's a super good build. You don't have to have Chalice of Power on Janna. I just like to have Janna in the corner because she usually gets the most effect out of her ultimate that way. But uh, positioning for this build is quite flexible and you can kind of position it however you like. But I still think Star Guardians are going to be a great build on the next update. So, Cybernetics, they got some much-needed buffs. Um, it's really interesting. Lucian got a lot of buffs. I'm just not I'm just not sure where I'm putting Lucian in this composition. I'm going to throw a little curveball Lucian composition in at the end because I'm not entirely sure where he fits because he does magic damage with his ability and they're kind of getting him to cast his ability more often. But like I said in the patch notes, Lucian sometimes just runs it down like sometimes like unlike Vayne who will always tumble away from her opponents Lucian will actually just dive into the opponent's backline and he doesn't drop aggro when he dashes unless he dashes like from a melee unit by the uh, for instance however six cybernetic still going to be pretty good Vayne got a slight buff so you could consider her as a carry um I think Aurelia is still going to face issues as a carry unless she has Infiltrator talents. The problem is that if you go up against a Vanguard or go up against a Protector player, she's not going to burst them out uh, quickly enough. And that's the problem with Aurelia. So unless you've got Infiltrator talents, it can be very difficult to make Aurelia work as a true carry. Uh, I have seen it possible, of course, but I think Vanguard Mystic is going to be a pretty popular build on this update. And I think Aurelia will have trouble getting to the back line without Infiltrator talents. So I think Vayne is still going to be your most consistent carry in this build. And also, obviously, Echo 2, who didn't get touched on the last update. And Echo 2 is still kind of broken. Okay, Six Rebels. I think coming back. I genuinely do. I think Six Rebels are on the warpath, uh, and we're going to see uh, a potential Six Rebel build coming back into the meta, just because other builds have come down in power. Uh, Master Yi got better. Uh, Jinx got slightly buffed as well. So I think we could be seeing some moves to have Six Rebels and other Jinx compositions back in the, back in the meta in general. Um, this is a build that you can usually transition out of Brawler Blaster into, um, but otherwise position like this in a little pyramid, Jinx on the back line. I still think Runins and Red Buff is a really good set of items for her, mainly because she doesn't really need the extra damage from items because she already gets a huge damage buff from Rebels. Uh, but again, itemization on Jinx is pretty flexible. You can play Last Whisper Infinity Edge. You can play Giant Slayers. Lots of things that you can actually do and consider with Jinx. Um, but I think Runins Red Buff is usually the best way to allow her to get resets more quickly. So that's why I'd be uh, considering that uh, here particularly. So um, yeah, Six Rebels. I think uh, with Jinx buffs and a lot of other nerfs we're probably going to see some jinx and rebels back in the meta and obviously when jinx is back in the meta brawler blasters will be too i personally like this version of brawler blasters with the mystics and the karma karma is still a massively underrated unit and i think will really facilitate jinx's power um this is running four Brawlers, three Rebels, two Mystics, and obviously the two Blasters with the Ezreal coming in. Um, I still think Ezreal will be the premier Blaster because he just synergizes with Blitzcrank to give the Chrono buff. Even with the Graves buffs, uh, bless his heart, I don't think he'll be much more than an early game pick in most circumstances. But as we see here, uh, I think you know we're going to see some Jinx back in the meta. Jinx struggled versus Shaco, so if Shaco is still really strong... Think we might have issues you might have to run a defensive item on her like a ga i would always recommend ga as probably the best jinx item um the the meta used to be that trap claw was pretty good because of kale but now i just think ga is the superior defensive item on jinx uh and this is brawler blaster very easy comp to play uh a good good way to try and get a solid top three in most circumstances and so if people are still ignoring jinx then try out brawler blaster because it will definitely be stronger on this update yeah, this build probably isn't going anywhere, if I'm completely honest with you. Um, I, I, I do think that 4 Dark Star is still going to be a good build. I think realistically, because Shaco didn't get touched and the Dark Star um, uh, trait didn't actually get touched, I, you know, Shaco was, was actually my primary carry in most circumstances. I just gave Jin whatever was left in terms of items. Always look to itemize Shaco in the early game. Uh, and he usually carries you pretty far into the game. If you can three-star him as well, especially with good items, he's a really solid carry. Um, don't know why Thresh is here. That should never be the case. It should always be. Uh, it should always try, try and get um, Fizz on the line. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll ignore the fact that Thresh is there. And then, uh, obviously, adding in Lulu for the Celestial is always nice. Oh, you already have Celestial with Rakan. Whatever. Your, your final unit can be whatever you like. Um, but yeah, Fizz and Shaco is the ultimate combo in this particular scenario. It's nice to have like an Ionic Spark on Fizz as well, because it's going to mean he does a little bit more damage. So I don't think this build is actually going to disappear. I think it's still going to be a very strong build. It's just going to be a little bit lower in power level. But honestly, if you're playing through Shaco, which I was anyway, um, you're probably going to still have a very good time in games uh, with Darkstar. Just Jarvan, not quite as strong as he used to be, and that's probably a good thing. Uh, not even probably, definitely a good thing. 
So I think Shredder 2.0 is going to be the superior way to play Shredder. This might look a bit wild to you with all the items, but I'm just showing you different carry options for Shredder 2.0. Obviously, Zaya is going to be a primary concern for you. But Master Yi with the buffs, I'm just including the classic Master Yi items, because if you can get him to 3-star, he could be a pretty solid carry in this composition as well. You could have two carries. But I think the 6-blade Master variation of this comp is going to be the stronger version of this comp. Um, even though 2 Celestial got nerfed, I just feel that you're going to need the extra Blade Master bonus to make up for the, the, the attack speed nerfs to Jarvan. Um, so I think overall Shredder 2.0 is definitely going to be weaker. And I think general, normal Shredder will also be a little bit weaker. But it will still be a viable build and it will still be able to get you top 4 pretty consistently if you hit the right units. This version of it is quite hard to play because you kind of need to get quite a few 3 stars like Shen and Jarvan and Zaya. Um, but Jarvan 3 star might be easier to achieve now. So that's the flip side. With Jarvan's not being as popular, then if you're going for a Shredder build that focuses on a 3 star Jarvan, you're probably still going to see good attack speed levels and you're probably still going to be in a position where you can get a good... Um a good result with this build so uh shredder 2.0 you can also default back to the classic shredder but i'm only going to put shredder 2.0 in the current build set um so yeah uh feel free to give it a go on this particular update it will definitely be a little bit weaker though so don't expect it to be uh, a steamrollery as it was before okay this is gonna be uh definitely one to talk about D darius got buffed so like potentially space jam maybe space jam um that's kind of what i want to throw out there just want to put it out there maybe we see some space jam uh i think it's a uh, definitely a build that could work space jam is definitely a build that could work uh with the darius buffs and the fact that he's going to be casting more often also be able to cast more often when he doesn't get a good execute off we could see Space Jam work. It's a build that you can roll a little bit earlier. So you can roll at 6 when you've got Ash, Wukong, Xin Zhao, Darius, Jason, Rakan. You roll at 6 and just look to 3-star everything. And then eventually you can go and find 4 Celestial with Lulu or Zaya. Uh, and then I like to add Janna because I think the CC is really good uh, in combination with this composition. And I think also the attack speed will ben benefit Darius heavily when he's got that 50 mana reduced uh, bonus as well. So just putting it out there. Uh, space jam can work and plus you can actually transition this into space pirates so if you get rid of lulu and janna and put in uh graves and gangplank you can actually go to full-on space pirates and that could be a good win condition in fact i'm going to try that on my smurf today genuinely going to go try a few of these comps to see how they work on my smurf um and yeah space jam could definitely be a viable option Another one that I think is going to be very good, but again is quite reliant on certain conditions, is going to be Blade Bros. Now, you don't need to use the Blade Master Z. You can actually bring an Irelia in here instead. But Blade Master Z is going to give you the best possible option for this composition. Master Yi gets some huge buffs on this update. Um, really, really big buffs on, on this update, including uh, some... some basically some uh, armor and uh, magic resist buffs, which is going to make him innately tanky. So that it means that you're going to be able to not have to rely on having tanky items on him, and you can still go for this classic rapid fire cannon Ginsu's uh, quicksilver combination. Uh, and obviously he's going to be much harder to kill now. If you can three-star this monster, then I think we could definitely see this competition becoming very popular. If you can't find Zed, consider cutting Fizz, cutting Zed, adding Irelia, and adding another uh, two Chronos. So getting rid of Lulu and adding in Blitzcrank, and another Chrono of some way, uh, shape, or form. Whatever that Chrono happens to be, like a Caitlyn, for instance, would be okay. Um, just for like that potential one-shot. I'm trying to think what other Chronos even exist. Wukong would be fine as well for the CC. And you could take it down a four chrono build path. This is another build that will be hard to pull off. You're going to need to three star Yi, Yasuo, and Shen, potentially even Zed. Three starring stuff is very risky, but it is a build that we need to keep our eyes on because it could be good uh, just because of the Master Yi buffs. He has got some pretty serious buffs on the last update. Uh, it's going to make him a much tankier unit in general. Um, so Master Yi, something to look out for, something to play for. Uh, Blade Bros, Bang Bros, whatever you want to call them, they could be back in the meta. All right, guys. This is the meme comp, okay? I, I don't know how good this comp's going to be. It's probably going to be trash. In fact, I'm almost certain it's going to be trash. However, kind of want to play it for the pure meme ability. And it's re going to re apparently require... One, two, three, four, five needlessly large rods and three tiers. But who cares? This is a meme Lucian comp. It's Chrono, three Cybernetic, uh, Fizz Echo, two Blaster, whatever you want. Basically full meme comp. Um, 
I, I'm going to probably play this on my Smurf just to see how it works out. But essentially, the whole comp revolves around Lucian having Hextech Gunblade, which will heal him on his ability usage, uh, then applying Ludens and having um, and having the Rabadons to increase the damage, uh, and then just constantly being winding up attack speed with Chrono to essentially constantly spam his ult. Now you could probably get rid of the Hextech Gunblade for another Ludens or the uh, the Rabadons for another Ludens. Obviously, this this comp is complete meme, but kind of want to try it for fun. So I'm putting this in the have fun with this and give this meme comp a go. I always do one meme comp every time I do this video. Um, yeah, and this is my meme comp. And this is going to go right at the end of the video so it doesn't get worked up in the tier list. Yeah, uh, that's my tier list, guys. Um, that's some build builds for you to try on 1015. I hope they help. If you've really, if you enjoyed the content, uh, feel free to subscribe, like, leave a comment down below, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, come to my house, um, take me out on a date. Actually, don't do that. Don't think Emily would be very happy. Yeah, uh, thanks. I will see you soon.